right?
Thank you, Rachel, for that beautiful music, welcoming us to worship on this Lord's Day, beautiful summer day. Glad you could join us. God has gathered us in. Let's rise to sing about it. If you're able, gather us in. Here in this place, the new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. In this space, a new in our dreams, brought here to live in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in, the rich and the haughty. Gather us in, the proud and the young. Give us a heart so meek and so loving. Give us the courage to enter the sun. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the wine and the bread. Here we shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew for the earth. Gather the drink, the water, compassion. Give us to eat. Take a moment to say hello to your neighbor if you didn't already. Yeah. I take it you'll be there Wednesday? I plan on it. Special welcome to our guests and visitors. Glad you could join us today. We also welcome those streaming online and those dialing into our worship. Our morning prayer is printed before us. I will read the light print if you'll follow with the bold. O oh Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes you. Let my mouth be full of your praise. And your glory Every day will I bless you. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O Lord of all the earth, and the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is with me, bless God's holy name. You redeem my life from the grave. And crown me with mercy and steadfast love. Lord, hear my prayer. Our next song, My Life Flows On, an Endless Song.
Let us pray. Ever-loving God, your Son gives himself as living bread for the life of the world. Fill us with such a knowledge of his presence that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life to serve you continually. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Good morning, kids. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good, good. Are you, are you full of the Spirit today? <laughs> hey, we got some Baptists here. <laughs> no, all Lutherans can say amen too. Today we're going to hear a reading from Ephesians, one of St. Paul's letters to the early churches. He says, Don't be drunk with wine which can get us into trouble, but be filled with the Spirit. And then you ask, how are you filled with the Spirit? Well, he goes on to say, by singing to one another spiritual songs, hymns, and praises, making melody to the Lord. Isn't that what we're doing? So what we're doing right this morning is being filled with the Spirit by singing with one another to one another psalms, hymns, and praises, uh, songs to the Lord. It's a way to be filled with the Spirit. And every day we can do that. We don't have to come to church on Sunday to be filled with the Spirit. You can sing in the shower, right, Art? Yeah. You can sing out in the woods. Any, I do it in the car. I've got Sirius XM. Wonderful. You can hit 100 stations, boom, join in the singing, and it's like the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us. God wants to fill us with His Spirit because there's other spirits wanting to get in, and not all of them are good. So, Lord, help us every day to be full of your spirit, singing to one another praises and psalms and hymns that lift you up and glorify your name. And like the kids at camp, we're going to sing, fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Thank you, God, for your love so great. You would give your only son, Jesus, to die for us in the world. And by his resurrection, give us life everlasting. And all God's kids said, Amen. Amen. Thanks to one of God's kids, Ann Zimmerman, for reading God's Word with us. Uh, let's see. Is it my on? Yeah, okay. Uh, the first reading is Proverbs 9, 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn, hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. 
lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The Psalm today is Psalm 34, nine through 14. I'll read the odd. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord. Come children and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words and from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The second reading is Ephesians 5, 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your heart, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We stand for the hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. Gospel Luke 12, 32 through 40. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes in and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Here ends the gospel. You guys played hide and seek, right? Remember, ready or not, here I come? Yeah. That's what Jesus is saying, isn't he? He's coming at an unexpected hour. Ready or not, here I come. Well, it's time for Name That Tune, written by Barry Gordy, but redone by a a group called the Fab Four. Some of you remember those guys. They say the best things in life are free But you can keep them for the birds and bees I want money That's what I want Your loving give me such a thrill But your loving don't pay my bills I want money That's what I want I want money, that's what I want. Money can't buy everything, it's true. What it can't buy, I can use. I want money, that's what I want. I want money. 
money. That's what I want. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Show me the money. Yeah, the Beatles did that version. They also did a song a little later than that where uh, Paul McCartney's singing, uh, uh, I'll give to you everything I've got, though it's not much. I don't care much for money. Money can't buy me love. So what is it? You want a lot of money or you don't want a lot of money? Well, we're kind of caught in that cycle sometimes. Things we want to do or want to have and things we know maybe we don't want to have or do. That's called being human. Caught up in the, uh, the catches between the two of them. Money, it, it's necessary for us to live in the culture we're in, obviously. You got to have it. But sometimes it can be too much of a lure to take us away from the true treasure which Jesus reminds us of today. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Think of the lottery, how for years that's lured people to to want to make those millions. Uh, I got a call yesterday, in fact, not from the lottery, but a publisher's clearinghouse. Really wasn't them. I knew it right away because they said, you won $3 million, you got the numbers. I said, I, I never entered. Uh, we just need to come to your house or your workplace and have you sign some papers. Right. Probably wanted my bank account. Think of all the people scammed by that stuff. Too many in our country that want the money, the millions. Like the, the retired machinist in New Jersey who retired, but for, for years, $10 a week, he'd spend on a lottery ticket. Finally, his wife saw that he had the winning numbers. But Cliff Cashman had a heart ailment. So she thought if she told him, he might just have a heart attack. So she called the pastor. What a call that would be, huh? To help Cliff understand he just won $80 million. So the pastor did come, as he was requested by Cliff's wife, and he sat down, he looked Cliff in the eyes, he said, Cliff, hypothetically, what if you won $80 million? He paused, looked at the pastor, and said, Pastor, I'd give half of it to the church, at which announcement the pastor had a heart attack, fell off his chair. So if some of you guys win $80 million, don't tell me. Tell Gloria or one of the council members. <laughs> yeah, money, it can do crazy things for us, can it? And some of us, it seems like we never have enough. Some seems like they've got enough and they're able to give it away. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Remember, he sent out the disciples two by two. He said, don't take a purse with you, don't take a bag, just put on your sandals and carry your staff, and then go out into the country, into the cities and towns, and announce the kingdom of God is at hand, and say, peace be with you. How many of us could do that today? Go without a bag or a purse, but take our staff. Of course, that staff is what one uses when you're on rocky ground and you need to keep stable. It's like the riddle somebody says, what starts out on all fours, ends up on twos, and then finally on three? A human. The third is the cane, right? And thank God for canes are these sticks that can keep us stable when we're walking. For your, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. How much is enough? God gives us what we need. That's why Jesus said over and over, don't worry. Somebody said Jesus talks more about money than anything else. I'm not sure about that. I've never studied it. I think he talks more about faith, love, grace, and mercy. But he does talk a lot about money. You can't serve both God and money, Jesus says. St. Paul says the love of money 
becomes the root of all kinds of evil. It can lead to uh, injustice. It can lead to crime. It can lead, as I've seen too often, in families being divided over money, over inheritances, over things. It, it's, it's crazy, but it happens, as all of you are well aware, too. So what do we do with our money? Well, Jesus tells a lot of parables, and one he talks about the, uh, the landlord who gives three of his servants talents. Now, some interpret that as money, but it could be gifts like playing the bass guitar or the piano. He gives one, one talent, one five, and one ten. Comes back a year later, the one with one talent buries it, probably fearful. The one with five invests it. The one with ten invests it. It's multiplied. He praises those that invest the talents, or in other words, use them. But the one that buried it scolds them. Says, you, you, you worthless servant, you should have invested that talent. Or you've heard this expression, use it or lose it. It can apply to money, can it? And Jesus wasn't just talking about investing in a CD for yourself, but actually using our gifts and monies to help bless others. Our youth minister, Katie Bernard, told us last week at our staff meeting, we had 30 kids at Bible camp this summer. 30 kids. That's like a small congregation. That costs money from parents, from the church, from people that say, Pastor, let me know if there's a kid that needs help. What better investment is there to invest in our youth going to Bible camp to hear about God's word, about following Jesus, about ma making friends with other kids? What a great investment. Or we think of a ministry started by our brother John Kirshner, who passed away this past week for those that hadn't heard started a ministry called We Care Ministries, simply to reach out to people in the community that need help with food, fuel, plumbing, or during the pandemic in our nursing homes to bring baked goods and then a devotional from the local clergy. What better gift to give, right, than to help our neighbors, which really fulfills the great commandment Love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So Jesus met this rich young ruler, rich in terms of money. And the young man says, Jesus, what must I do to inherit the kingdom? And Jesus said, well, have you kept the commandments? Yes, I've kept all the commandments. Now, Go sell all you have and give it to the poor, and then come follow me. Did he do it? No. He left sadly because he had much wealth. But later in the gospel, some say, if you read Mark's gospel, it's kind of a strange appearance, but there's a young man that runs naked across the uh, field. Some say that was the rich young ruler who, like St. Francis, whose father wanted him to be a rich businessman, literally takes his clothes off in the public square and heads out to rebuild the church. Who knows? But it could have been the rich young ruler finally got it. It's not about being rich with money. It's about being rich with God's love. The treasure that we hear about in 2 Corinthians. We have this treasure. I'm talking about God's love and grace in these jars of clay, that would be us, these fragile jars, to show that the power belongs to God, not to us. And so, in the temple, they're taking the offering like we do here at Chetek Lutheran, Dover Lutheran, and some of the wealthier people were probably showing their $100 bills, not to bless God, but maybe to show off and here comes a widow with two pennies, puts them in the plate. I'm sure some of the guys laughed at her. You know what Jesus said? 
This is the greatest offering. She's given everything she has, those two coins. And that's what Jesus is telling us today. Not to hoard, not to build up for ourselves, but to be willing to give. God doesn't need our money. He needs our hearts. And that's one way we show our heartfelt love for God, is to be willing to give a tenth or a portion of what God has given us so we could bless others. So Lord, help us this day to see all that you've given us are gifts to be shared with others for the sake of Jesus and his reign here on earth now and for eternity. Amen. So have no fear, little flock. God is with us. Have no fear, little flock, have no fear, little flock, for the Father has chosen to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock, have good cheer, little flock, have good cheer, little flock, for the Father will keep you in forever. Have good cheer, little flock. Praise the Lord high above. Praise the Lord high above. For he stoops down to hear you, uplift and restore you. Praise the Lord high above. Thankful hearts, praise to God. Please join with me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let's join together now in prayer for God's people in the church, all people according to their needs. On this earth, we have no abiding city, as we're reminded this past week by the passing of some of our brothers and sisters. I mentioned John Kirshner died after uh, going through quite a battle and recovery, uh, died suddenly uh, last Monday. His funeral will be this coming Friday 11 a.m. here at Chatek Lutheran Church. We pray for John's family and friends in their time of loss. Also, we pray for Kaylin Books, who died suddenly this past week. Her family, especially Justin, her husband, and her child, and her family and friends. Also, our brother Don Matthew died this past week. We pray for Julie, his wife, and their family and friends. And sadly to say, Scott and Heidi Kodish they didn't die, but their house was burned down uh, last Friday. So we pray for Scott and Heidi and their time of recovery. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for inviting us not to worry, to have no fear as individuals, as families, as a community called the church, for we know you are with us and will bring to light all things and that you will help us even in times of death, destruction, to recover by your grace. And even through death, you promise to raise us up to eternity. We especially claim that promise today for John, 
for Kaylin and Don, others that have gone before us. You tell us, blessed are those who mourn, for we shall be comforted. And we also pray for uh, B. Wheeler's family, whose funeral was here last week, for Michelle Moyen family, whose sister Kathleen passed away recently. Be with Scott and Heidi Kodish in the loss of their home, and thank you that their lives were spared. And use us to support all of our brothers and sisters in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Bless this congregation, O Lord, our partnership with Dover, your church here and throughout the world today, especially where there's persecution and oppression, conflict and schism, and use us to build up the body of Christ with the gifts you give us, not to hide them or bury them, but use them for your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear the cries of all your people today, O Lord, wherever they are, the hungry and the poor, the homeless and the refugee, the sick and the dying and the grieving. We pray for all those caught up in the strife and violence of war and speed the day when there is peace for all. And bless all the peacemakers who stand in harm's way this day. Lord, in your mercy. Thank you for the gift of our children who are soon going back to school. Bless the children, the teachers, administrators, that they might grow in wisdom, understanding, and that you'd use all of us to support our youth. Lord, in your mercy. As we prepare for the gift of Holy Communion today, we confess before you and one another that we have fallen short of loving you with our whole heart and neighbors as ourselves. And thank you that by the death and burial of your son, Jesus, you forgive us, and by his resurrection, you give us the promise of everlasting life in his name. Amen. At this time, we'll receive our offerings unto the Lord. The noisy buckets go to help support our youth and family ministries. Let's rise if we're able. Let us pray. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you've first given us, ourselves, our time, 
our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us in the world, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in the night in which he was betrayed, took the bread, gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. And when you pray, pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are invited to the Lord's table for the communion where you can stand or kneel, receive the bread or the gluten-free wafers in the bread tray. There's wine or apple juice in the center of the wine tray. You could put your empty cups in the baskets when you're done. Please be seated. Communion stewards, please come forward.
Let us pray. We thank you, almighty God, for this healing gift of life, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to forgive us and heal us, to strengthen us and keep us in your grace, and at the last, to bring us to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine on us and be gracious to us. Lord, look upon us with favor and give us your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sign with me. I'm a child of God. I am loved by God, and I'm not alone. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks to Marissa and Rachel for playing. Let's give them a nice hand. Bob Rogers would normally join us, but he's out umpiring baseball games today. So pray for Bob and the team's playing. Uh, there's uh, good treats, homemade treats downstairs and coffee. There's adult Bible study uh, in the office wing following worship. As I mentioned, John Kirshner's Celebration of Life service will be this coming Friday at 11 a.m., 9.30 uh, visitation. Kalen Book service will be this coming Thursday at 11 a.m. Visitation for Kalen will be Wednesday night, 4 to 7, right here at Chatech Lutheran. Don Matthew, there's no service planned at this point, but we'll keep the family in our prayers. And also, we continue to pray for those struggling with uh, physical and emotional mental illnesses. Let us pray. Lord, we do ask your blessings now on all those who turn to you in their time of need for health, for healing and comfort, and use us to be instruments of comfort and healing in the spirit of Jesus who reached out to all people with his love and compassion. Amen. Next Sunday, we have a special uh, uh, blessing of pack, not packbacks, backpacks. Got to get the B and the P right there. Backpacks, uh, but more, most importantly, blessing the children who carry them on their backs because school is starting not too many days from now, so we're going to have that service uh, a blessing next Sunday here. Uh, 8 o'clock, 9.15 in the park, and 10.30 at Dover. September, we have a paradox. Two doctors are coming. Dr. Rich Melheim will be here rally Sunday, September 8th. Uh, many of you have met Rich before. He's the nephew of the late couple Jim and Donna Lindbaum. He's an internationally known author, speaker, and speaks... Uh, directly to parents and adults about how we can help children grow up in the faith. A very timely gift for us to have Dr. Melheim here. Saturday, September 28th, we got Dr. Linda Soli, also noted author, speaker, who's been here before. She's written a book uh, called Overcoming Negative Emotions Like Anger and Bitterness, and that'll be timely for our congregations Saturday, it'll be a morning retreat. Uh, we'll get more details to you in the days ahead. Any other announcements? If not, let's rise and get ready to sing soon. And very soon, he's coming. <laughs>